Guys, it's the final Japan video. This is a very upsetting moment. This is my penultimate day before leaving Japan to return back home to Scotland. So to start off the day, I had a very slow, chill morning and I sat and ate a 7-Eleven special breakfast on a bench near the castle. Heading back to Fukuoka. The subway that I got on to head back to the Shinkansen station in Osaka was actually Nintendo themed, which made me very happy. I then headed onto the bullet train to get me back to Fukuoka. Of course, though. I had to stop at Starbucks first, didn't I? So I stopped off at Starbucks before getting on to the Shinkansen and I got myself a cheeky soy matcha latte for the train. So for my final two nights in Japan, I was staying in Fukuoka and I decided to stay in a capsule pod hotel. The capsule pod I stayed in was at the Millennials, which I had stayed at previously and I really enjoyed it because essentially it's a pod, right? But the pod feels like your own private room because it's actually quite a big pod and it feels like a tiny room. I needed to stay in Fukuoka for my final night as that was where I was flying from to get home to Scotland. I had kept some of my luggage at the university I was studying at while I was on my travels so I needed to go and collect said luggage as well as say one final goodbye to my office desk and peers at the university campus. By the time I got back to Fukuoka City it was quite late so I got you guessed it, another 7-Eleven special for dinner. And I sat and ate this in the hotel lounge because the hotel lounge at the Millennials Capsule Pod Hotel is kind of bougie. The Capsule Pod Hotel is attached to a hotel hotel. So the lounge area is available for everyone, all the guests. So I sat there for a bit and now here is my final day in Japan. I didn't set myself too much to do this day as I wanted to just kind of walk around and take it all in one last time. The first place I headed to in the morning was a local coffee place called Toffee, which sits on a river going through Fukuoka. The coffees here are made with local homemade tofu. Tofu in coffee, what? So I decided to try the matcha this time and I also got these wee fresh donut balls to have with it. Both these things were amazing, they were delicious. After that I headed to Ohari Park as this was a part of Fukuoka that I hadn't got around to seeing yet. I chilled and walked around here for a bit. I actually grabbed another Starbucks soy matcha latte as well as some mugs to take home. I headed back to the main Tenjin and Hakata areas to do a bit of browsing in the shops for souvenirs. <laughs> There was one thing I wanted to get, which was chopsticks, and I couldn't for the life of me find chopsticks anywhere. I think I wasn't looking in the right places because I didn't want fancy chopsticks. I basically wanted to get like a variety of budget-friendly chopsticks so I could give a pair of chopsticks to like every single person I knew, basically. <laughs> yeah, I was just finding it a very impossible task to find these chopsticks. But eventually, after heading to two different Don Quixote's, and the last one I went to was at about 11 p.m. at night. Bear in mind I had a flight the next day at like 8 a.m. This was my final chance. I was like, right, this Don Quixote is 20 minutes away, but we're going, we're going to go. And we're gonna keep our fingers and toes crossed and hopefully find these chopsticks. And we did, we found chopsticks. I bought these chopsticks and I also popped into one last Starbucks to grab some more mugs as souvenirs. A silly amount of mugs, might I add. And then I went back to my capsule pod and I spent a solid hour or so, probably longer than an hour to be honest, playing Jenga with 
all of my items, all of my things in my like three different bags, trying to fit all of my stuff. I could check in two cases. I only brought one check-in case with me, so I was like, right, I'm gonna check in my carry-on case. My Nintendo bag that I bought from Nintendo World, I'm gonna put all of my mugs. I think there must have been like nine mugs, maybe more. <laughs> I'm gonna put the nine mugs in that bag and that's gonna be my carry-on and then I'm gonna have my rucksack Which is gonna be my personal item, which I'm pretty sure had two more mugs in it. So there was a lot of mugs I actually kind of enjoyed trying to pack everything together I also bought a bottle of sake which I was trying to like wrap strategically because three different flights strong chance that it might have broken but um, Spoiler alert the sake didn't break Hallelujah. Packing genius right here. And then just like that, my little three month adventure to Japan was over. I went to the airport with my luggage. I took the subway to the airport with my rucksack, my bag full of mugs, my big hold case and my little check-in carry case, which was very heavy by the way, because there was sake in that one. So I had these four pretty heavy bags that I somehow got from my hotel to the subway station. You should have seen me get into the subway station by the way because I think there wasn't lifts from ground level to underground level so I had to take these four bags down like three flights of stairs. Anyway, got all my bags to the airport somehow, checked them in and I flew home. I actually, I saw Mount Fuji one last time when I was getting onto my long haul flight from Tokyo to London, it started taking off and I could see Mount Fuji in the distance, which was very, very cool. But yeah, I had the most incredible experience living in Japan for three months. It was overwhelming at times, but it generally helped me conquer a lot of fears and anxiety about doing things alone in particular. I hope to return one day and maybe bring someone along with me. But wait, this vlog isn't over yet because I've also shoved in the Christmas and New Year vlog clips. We returned back to Scotland. Woo, this is where I am currently. Woohoo. I got home on like 22nd of December, I think. So it was like three days before Christmas. And I got home at like 2 a.m. Mark picked me up from the airport after like midnight. And I got home and Mark had put up all the Christmas decorations and the Christmas tree and the flat was all Christmassy. Mark is not a put up the Christmas decorations kind of guy. So that was quite cute and that was quite special. It's also special because it was our first Christmas in our new flat. I got a very good sleep that night and then the first thing that me and Mark decided to do the next day was go to Nando's. <laughs> Ice cream with caramel sauce. <laughs> then go to the Christmas market. There's a bar over there. Can we go to the bar? Can we go to the bar? After that, we headed to the Livingston outlets to do some last minute Christmas shopping and also had to grab a Wagamama's, didn't I? I'd been out of Japan two minutes and was already wanting Japanese food. The ramen was good, but it obviously wasn't as good as the ramen I had in Japan. Duh. The mushroom deep fried squid though? Unbelievable. I also got a wee bubble tea before heading home. This is a bunch of snacks and some sake that I bought for my secret Santa this year. I had a lot of fun picking these all out at Aeon and throwing them all into my basket willy-nilly. So I hope my secret Santa appreciated all those Japanese snacks. I didn't show you at the time when I was in Japan, but this is the silly amount of Japan Starbucks mugs that I bought for everyone and carried home in my hand luggage. Then this is all the secret Santa presents wrapped because I literally wrapped every single snack individually. I don't know, I was in the Christmassy mood when I got back. I think the whole of December I hadn't really felt that Christmassy when I was in Japan but as soon as I got home I was like Alexa turn on Michael Bublé 
let's get to Christmas wrapping. And this is all the mugs and chopsticks that I laid out for all the different people that I bought things for. I didn't really need to wrap these as they were kind of like souvenirs, but I was kind of killing two birds with one stone because it was kind of like a souvenir present and also a Christmas present. I didn't film much over the Christmas period as I focused on reuniting with family and friends. And I was also super busy to like the third or fourth of January or something like that. So I pretty much just didn't film anything for a couple of weeks. But here is me and Mark going to Burger King on New Year's Day to try the new Burger King vegan bacon double cheeseburger and also the bacon royale thing in an attempt to try and cure hangovers. The verdict is it was good and it hit the spot but it was a bit much. I personally prefer the Burger King's plant-based Whopper and the normal uh, vegan royale. So finally we can now move on to 2023 content. It's only taken us five months into 2023 to catch up to 2023. Yeah, I'm kind of just making a big mishmash of videos at the moment. We've got vlogs, we've got day in the life, we've got random food videos coming up, we've got PhD stuff, etc, etc. If there's anything in particular you would like to see from me, do let me know, just comment below. But in other exciting news, I might be leaving Scotland again for another PhD opportunity. But more on that later. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I will catch you in the next one.